and Europe. Again, we were talking about champions. These are two great examples. Uh, Europe, if I do your formal introduction, we run out of time. Uh, so I will just say that Europe and John are working on the, the payment LCA tool for the sustainability, sustainable payment working group. But very briefly, Yop work for the right environment LCD is the president, and uh, we will distribute the the bio as well, right, Bershut? So we can have the presentation of the of the people. Uh, just to know that if someone knows about Dubokal, Yop is someone that was behind, you know, the the, the actual conception of the tool. Uh, John, it's a legend in the uh, payment. Uh, word in a, in academia in industry so really happy to have you both here and stage is yours thank you i think you as the presenter rights right brescia and you can go yes <clears throat> john do you want to take it away sure okay so uh we're going to first present uh about the LCA framework that the tool is built in and that is also the guidance for, uh, we hope and we believe, the guidance for development of future tools in the U.S. So this is the, and, and we're going to go a little bit quick, quickly here uh, in the interest of time uh, for the conference. And thanks again for having us. So the uh, pavement lifecycle assessment framework is shown here. There's a link at the bottom. Uh, I believe these presentations will be made available at the end of the um, conference. Um, the need uh, for this framework um, about seven, eight years ago is that ISO standards for life cycle assessment are generic for all industrial products and processes. And there are some things that are fairly unique and special in each industrial sector, pavements being one of those. Um, so the need was to produce some more detailed guidance. And the goal was to produce that detailed guidance for LCA specific to pavements and provide an overall an approach and methodology um, for those LCAs. And this was published in January, 2016. So why, why was this developed? Well, prior to 2010, uh, LCA for pavements was, uh, the wild, wild west, as we say, there was uh, some 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 chaos. Everybody was doing it the way they wanted. There were many differences in how people were doing pavement LCA, and it was producing a lot of confusion. Sometimes more confusion than understanding, and often it was difficult to focus on the results of an LCA because the readers were having to spend all their time trying to figure out how the LCA was done. And often it wasn't well documented. There was little transparency as to how it was done. The references for uh, this FHWA pavement LCA framework were of course the, the ISO series. Uh, EN 15804 uh, significantly informed us. We looked across the literature at pavement LCA, and then an initial attempt at uh, pavement LCA guidelines had, be de had been developed by the UCPRC, where I work, not the UCRC. Um, and uh, those were then reviewed at the first pavement LCA symposium in 2010. And you can go uh, to the website for the 2010 pavement LCA symposium uh, and find out information about um, those guidelines and, and what was going on at the time. So the original plan for the development of this is shown on the left, uh, fairly straightforward. Looks like uh, in the European context, looks like five work packages here. Um, and then we found as we got into this, we had many engaged stakeholders from competing industries and even within industries and definitely within supply chains as well as academia and LCA practitioners. Um, government in the United States does not direct this. It can only facilitate, which was the role of federal highways. Because of this very high level of engagement, the reality of how we did this was instead of gathering feedback, developing a second draft and delivering the framework, we went through several more rounds of drafts and feedback uh, particularly with industry groups, arriving at what we aim for, which is a fair and transparent uh, uh, framework. And the result, we think, is a robust framework with trust and transparency 
uh, within the industries and between the industries, which was a major outcome of this was to get industries work, different industries working together. Uh, table of contents, uh, very straightforward, following the, uh, the first four uh, elements of a life cycle assessment. And then we also discuss reporting and uh, very important, uh, particularly in the context in the United States, in North America, where we really don't have any government organizations or AASHTO or standards organizations sitting on top of this, uh, the critical review process. That also includes a primer on LCA for newcomers to the subject. Uh, each chapter in the framework includes an introduction and a background for the new, the new users, the people new to LCA, a flow chart for completing the phase step-by-step, step, and then description, narrative of the step-by-step step guidance, and then some commentary on that, including some examples to help illustrate how to apply those steps, and then the references for the development of that chapter. Uh, this is an example of the flowchart. I'm going to read through every step of this flow. No, I'm not going to read through every step of this flowchart, um, but pretty detailed flowcharts throughout. And the idea is many of our many of our people reading this and step and, and looking to use it have never done an LCA before. So we wanted to provide pretty detailed uh, guidance. Uh, here's another example. Uh, the multiple authors, you see a little bit of different style in these. This is the flow chart for critical review. And again, all of these refer back to the, uh, this is basically taking the very high level sparse description in the ISO standards and even in EN 15804 and building it out to very, very detailed um, step by step that somebody can follow, we hope. Next. Uh, this is an example showing, for example, how to choose analysis periods. And, and pavement, uh, in reality, is one of the more complex uh, industrial processes and products to analyze uh, because you have all of these different contexts for functionality, different functional lives, uh, many steps of maintenance and rehabilitation, and pavements never die. Uh, they normally get reincarnated as a new pavement. So there's a lot of... Uh, detail in the guidance for how to handle these things. In this case, we're looking at uh, uh, being able to compare um, two different uh, new pavements or reconstruction on the bottom left, and how do you choose an, an appropriate analysis period when the design lives of the original construction shown in blue are different. And then even more complex is on the right-hand side uh, where we're comparing, we've got an existing pavement do we perform a sequence of maintenance or do we move uh, and do a rehabilitation, which have very different functional lives? What's the appropriate way to choose the analysis period? These are examples of the level of detail that we've provided in the, um, in the guidance. And in addition to a lot of robust discussion between and within industries, that figure that I just showed was a lot of intense discussion between Yup and myself. So there were a lot of things that had never really been sorted out before uh, that we had to sort out for this guidance. We also include some sidebars uh, for definitions and for some examples um, to really focus on some critical issues. Uh, a very big one that still has not been resolved in large part within the product category rules in the United States. I mean, it has, but in reality, different groups are interpreting it differently, is when is something a waste and when is it a co-product? And that results in some different types of analyses in, uh, in LCA. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the status right now, uh, we want need to emphasize that this is guidance, not federal rules, not federal requirements. Um, this is basically an inf information document on the best practice for conducting a pavement LCA and not a policy or mandate. <clears throat> okay, okay thank you, John. Yeah, so, so there was a good introduction and I think the main takeaway for the uh, collective industry, including agencies and everybody involved in uh, pavement engineering and design and planning, um, got together to create and comment on this framework. And I think we 
managed to uh, raise awareness within the industry of what LCA is uh, and edu educate a lot on what types of LCAs are out there and what decisions do you make when you want to perform a certain type of LCA. And we see that reflected in uh, the PCR documents that are being produced uh, throughout the country over time uh, and how LCA is being conducted. Uh, so it's not a formal standard like John said, but it definitely has uh, streamlined some of the decision making and assumptions that people make while doing LCA. What we try to do here and what I'll be talking about now for the next 10 minutes uh, together with John um, is how to apply that framework uh, in an environment and a tool, LCA PAVE we've called it, for agencies to use uh, to quantify environmental performance metrics for different use cases. So the objective was to develop a simple LC, uh, Microsoft Excel based tool that could be used to um, uh, assess, a benchmark and communicate environmental impact of materials from cradle to uh, grave, excluding the use stage, uh, to help agencies. So the focus of this tool is for somebody working at an agency that wants to include environmental performance metrics using lifecycle assessment. It includes all lifecycle stages. Um, uh, it does exclude the use stage. There's still some debate on pavement vehicle interaction as you are all well, well aware of. We decided not to include that, but built a tool in a way that we can easily include that uh, in the future when the science has settled a bit more. What Heather said before is that we wanted to make sure that this was built on publicly available data. So there's no paywall, no private data. So everybody has access to the data. Um, and where available, we want to utilize the uh, investments uh, from the industry in making environmental product declaration avail information available. So there's a way to, the database has EPDs in it and there's a way for users to include EPDs. A lot of different players have been involved, just like in the Sustainable Pavement Technical Working Group, which you see in the top middle in light green, that has been meeting for about 10 years now. Um, <clears throat> people involved in, in reviewing and developing this team are in the middle. So as a project team, we developed a pavement lifecycle thinking task group with representation from agencies, uh, and we interface with all the members of the Sustainable Pavement Technical Working Group. We, in brown on the right, say at one o'clock, you see the federal LCA comments. They provide a lot of support in terms of metadata and background data, uh, definition of impact categories, so the fundamentals of doing LCA for any application, and we try to make that specific for pavement. And if you follow the clock clockwise, uh, you see that all kinds of industries uh, and different decision makers within the uh, pavement column uh, were involved. Uh, and on the left in blue, you see how we interacted with different, different uh, federal agencies uh, and different groups within Federal Highway Administration. Now, shout out to the data team uh, from different uh, universities. Uh, John and I are represented here, but also Michigan Tech uh, has played an important role in developing this data. Where we are now, we have a tool available uh, about to be published. It's a proof of concept, uh, that's how we look at it, uh, to create a more robust tool going forward. It's ready for agencies to start using, um, and we're starting to work on uh, using the tool uh, for pilot studies. And so we're working with different agencies to see how this tool can be used within their process and what type of information you get from applying uh, uh, LCA PAVE uh, and how you can influence decision-making within uh, agencies. So they can use, use it for um, adding environmental performance metrics where DETs are making planning decisions uh, with existing financial and performance metrics it can, can, can prepare uh, full life cycles of pavement uh, to smaller blocks if you're interested in, for example, comparing treatments. What we see going forward is that the database that's in there is initial. It will be expanded and more regionalized going forward. It's mostly national focus right now. We've performed a beta test. There's a methodology report. There's a user manual. Uh, it's been reviewed by the people and currently it's in the publication process from Federal Highway. John, would you like to tell a little bit more about the data that's in the tool before I show the tool? You bet. Um, so just a quick look at the data. One of the key considerations for the data 
uh, from federal highways, uh, part of our scope was that we needed to be used public data sets as opposed to data that we bought from uh, LCA, a life cycle inventory um, comp uh, companies that develop inventories. So uh, the tool is limited in scope to materials, equipment, transport, energy, and waste. Uh, we're not covering the use stage in, in this stage of the tool. Um, so it's basically the construction, the transport of the materials, uh, and the materials production. Uh, we were asked to find the best practical means for finding data. So this included data, uh, particularly background data from the federal LCA commons that uh, Heather and Milena talked about. It included data from industry. And then where gaps existed, uh, additional data was pulled together to make sure that the tool could operate, that, that it was complete. Uh, the tool, when a major effort went into producing metadata, uh, this is part of the goal of transparency. Um, so there's information about the data source, and then it also included implementation of a data quality matrix, which was developed as part of the parallel project from Michigan Tech uh, University uh, to develop a data quality matrix that could be used. And the data quality matrix is readily available. Uh, this is a quick overview of the collaborators in the federal commons. So our, our inventories for, and the laboratories and federal agencies producing those inventories. Um, so elect the background data, basically electricity, fossil fuels and renewable uh, energy, construction equipment, end of life processes, transportation processes came from the federal commons effort. And then the industry groups involved in federal commons, the National Ready Mix Concrete Association and the National Asphalt Pavement Association provided inventory information for pavement materials. Um, for the foreground data, um, as I mentioned, so publicly available uh, material EPDs uh, in the US can be used. Um, the tool can take uh, EPDs, uh, that includes product plant specific EPDs, which are preferred, the exact material from the exact plant. If that's not available, the next step is to go to industry average EPDs. Um, and we need to understand that EPDs are produced under different product category rules. They may not be reporting the same, may not be reporting all the same things. Um, so there's an approach for uh, dealing with incomplete um, data. And this is a part of the data quality uh, and metadata information. Um, LCA of materials were used, found in the literature for the US um, where, wherever possible. Um, and then the next step that, you, that was done was to assume and perform uh, calculations if required so that the data met United States geographic and environmental conditions and requirements. This is where data came from outside of the United States. States, uh, And we search for publicly available material EPDs published outside the U.S. And if that didn't work, then we search for materials LCA uh, in other parts of the world excluding the U.S. And then when we had to, uh, we went to the purchase data. So that was the approach, again, trying to be as regionally specific and detailed as possible and working through that hierarchy uh, of data to arrive at the final data set. The equipment uh, inventory data involved matching the equipment from the federal uh, EPA moves non-road uh, project list, figuring out specific fuel consumption for all construction equipment and the horsepower range by running moves, and then using open LCA emissions data for the fuels to determine uh, the, the, the inventories and the impact assessments for equipment use. Uh, this is the data quality matrix, data quality assessment matrix. Um, and within this, there are quantitative scores. Now developing the quantitative scores, there are guidelines for putting a one to five number. So it's still somewhat qualitative, but uh, there are guidelines in this to give your data a score and then it becomes numerical in terms of a one to five score on each of the elements of the data quality assessment. Okay, thank you, John. Yeah, the, the data quality assessment is based on the EPA data quality matrix that you are all well aware of, I'm sure. And we try to customize that for the pavement environment. So it's more specific to what we see is important for EPDs and data within uh, pavement LCA. 
Um, I have a few minutes, not many, so this is going to go fast, and I'm just going to use slides, uh, so I'm not going to crash the tool itself, but uh, the, the tool is there, just trust us. <laughs> it's a LCA PAVE, as I said. This is the starting screen. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the uh, structure and how people can interface with it. So it's based around libraries, which uh, contain data, uh, default data uh, from the database that uh, John just described. Uh, and users can add their own data to uh, either copy and edit or put in their own information to make it more specific to the agency or the region. Um, the user interface is with this data libraries through what we call an analysis session. So you go do an analysis uh, where you can model design alternatives, run the analysis and display results. John talked about different data points. We call them here the libraries and they're organized in materials, equipment, waste, transport, mixed designs and activities. And here you see an example of uh, looking through that database where you see on the left, the collection of materials that are organized in certain categories which you can copy or add new ones. And on the right, you see some information uh, about those materials so the analysis can uh, be performed. Uh, the tool calculates everything back to a mass basis. Uh, so everything can be connected uh, to transportation and waste uh, with putting in mass at one point. Uh, for every material, there is a, a, a the details section with properties, which is shown in the previous slide but there's also the impact indicators itself and the metadata. And the impact indicators uh, use Tracy and use different uh, flow categories um, uh, like energy, uh, uh, waste, and water. <clears throat> the metadata that John just presented uh, in the slide is fully integrated in the tool. So on the right, you see the different topics from the table that he just showed, and you see the one to five scale uh, in terms of rating the, 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 the data quality. Uh, in the middle of the screen, you see that there is uh, generic metadata, who recorded the data, what's the public source, everything is traceable and transparent. And we thought this was very important because not every data part of the database uh, is as good or has as high as a quality uh, as could be. We want to make sure that EPDs can be used within the tool. So when you add a new material, you can select whether it is an EPD, yes or no, so users can indicate it. And so when you come to, come back next, you can see whether it was from an EPD. Uh, then there's information that you can log about that EPD, for example, what it represents in terms of application technology standards of the material. And then there's an input screen for the actual impact indicators on the right, where you can log the, the values uh, for these different impact categories. And we, we put in another tie to the, uh, the framework, the Federal Highway LCA framework that John presented on earlier, uh, all the impact categories and flows from the LCI are reflected uh, in this tool and can be used to report EPD data. Within the tool, you start an analysis session when you want to compare something. Within that, you can define different alternatives uh, for different design options or different treatments or a different life cycle with the, uh, the, the, the years of how far out do you model a pavement, example that John showed in his presentation. Uh, and if you've done that, you can then say, well, what of the pavement do I want to model? So just mainline shoulder ramps, basically your system boundaries. And within that, then you can say, okay, well, let's start to define uh, the specific activities. And within those activities, what, what data from the database do I need in terms of materials, equipment, waste, et cetera? So to give an example, um, we're in alternative one now. Uh, we're trying to uh, model a type of pavement over a period of time. And what you see here on the left is that you can model something uh, like a life cycle with initial construction, maintenance, preservation, a couple cycles, and then removal at the end. And then when you focus on, okay, within uh, each uh, life cycle stage, um, there are activities. Uh, here, we're putting in the six inch aggregate base that is highlighted. And then on the right, you see, well, what actually goes into that six inch aggregate base uh, in terms of crushed stone, fine aggregate, and how much equipment do I need to compact it and put it in place? And what you see here is a connection between selecting those materials, but then also how much of this material. So the user gets cues constantly throughout the tool, uh, how much material they're dealing with and what the environmental impact associated with that is. The user can choose a functional unit, the entire project, 
per year, per lane mile, per square foot. So depending on how you want to use the tool, there are different ways, appropriate ways to represent the results. And we give the user the options to choose the one that fits their needs best. Then within that, we can show uh, the results. Uh, results are uh, uh, listed here in the left column, and you can compare different alternatives within the tool. If you want to have more detail, Outside the tool, all the information, all different cuts are being uh, presented for users. Within the tool, you can do a comparison of one to another one. So here you see an example of two HMA designs that are being uh, compared uh, with some differences. Uh, and then within those differences, we can look at, okay, show me the results per indicator. So basically you see a, a complete model tree and the numbers that you see in these uh, two um, overviews are not mass anymore, now they're actually uh, renewable energy, because that's the impact indicator that's being selected right now. So if you're focused on global warming or CO2 or something else, you can back-to-back uh, -back compare where the differences are and what is actually causing those differences. Another cut through we can do is by life cycle stage, by facility type, by activity, by process, just to give users all the information so they can actually focus on um, uh, finding what makes the difference, what creates a difference, and if there's a way to improve on that, make some changes. Now, just to wrap it up, here are a few examples of um, result views. Uh, I think you're very familiar with these types of views. On the left, you see alternative one compared to alternative two for different impact indicators on a, a relative scale, so from zero to 100%. And on the right, you see a breakdown by life cycle stage for one alternative where you can see, oh, is it in initial construction? Is it in maintenance and preservation? Or where is the impact coming from? Um, so within the tool, there's limited uh, uh, result views, but with the uh, output version to another spreadsheet, uh, all these different cross sections are available to users. So that can be generated. It looks like this. There's a session summary, every alternative, uh, in the comparison is defined with a definition, a 508 compliant version that's re required for federal uh, publication. Uh, every detail that's in there is by category data, it's, it's uh, um, um, by percentage of category data, uh, and all the breakdowns that you can have in terms of uh, which material, which life cycle stage, which activity, which part of the pavement. So I think we have a fully fledged tool that can be used for a really detailed and thorough interpretation. Uh, given time, I went through this quite quickly, but I think it's, a, it, it's enough to get a glimpse and a sense and the smell of this uh, tool. And maybe in the future, we can do a deeper dive uh, and actually go into the tool with you guys. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you very much. And John, I think it's very good to see these tools that makes, th th these tools that make our life much easier and, and better. So, I know, David, did you have any comments? I, I could see that there was already some questions and answers in the chat box. Well, I have plenty of questions, but we don't have enough time. But, <laughs> I mean, I, I've been, uh, you know, I've been uh, not working, working a bit with them because I've been in Davis for a month and it was a very good experience. We stayed last year for a month, myself and Anna. We exchanged a lot, so it was, I think, was a, a very good experience. Uh, but you moved, you move uh, with the development, and uh, it's very good to see how the tool it's uh, building up now. Uh, what I wanted to uh, clarify is, uh, thanks to this tool, are you looking at specific indicators for LCA, for instance? So are you starting with few indicators? Or are you going for a full LCA? Uh, is there any requirement? So the tool is built with a lot of freedom for users to set up their system boundaries, their selection of uh, what's included, what's not, which life cycle stages, and also the selection of uh, impact indicators and different flows like energy and waste. So the agencies that are using uh, the tool uh, can decide which ones are important to them. What the tool does is when they say, we want to look at, for example, energy, global warming, and the use of uh, recycled content, they can select those indicators. And what the tool then does is when they select data from the database, it'll tell them whether that data actually has those indicators. 
whether that's complete or not. And so the tool is, uh, the user is free to choose what they want, but the tool will tell them with enough yeah. information whether there's actually sufficient data to do that analysis, yes yeah. or no. Based on the data. Perfect. Correct. And now it's a more a general question on the sustainable payment technique of working group. I mean, I've been there. I know how it feels, but I would like people here to possibly realize uh, what it means and uh, uh, what is your experience since this started? Because it started 10 years ago or maybe nine years ago, right? 10. So possibly we would like to keep the momentum of what we're doing now with this webinar and continuing and hopefully building something similar. So could you give us some of your, your impression, you know, your experience working in this group? I can jump in first. Um, when this group started, they didn't know, oh, I think, I think less than 10% of us knew what LCA was. So I think we spent two years separating it from life cycle cost analysis, first of all. Um, but the very, at the very beginning, it was primarily focused on recycling and there was kind of a, an assumption that recycling equals sustainability. And uh, the concept of LCA was then brought to the group and the group got excited about it. Federal Highways got excited about life cycle assessment. Um, and then from there, that kind of shifted the focus. Recycling, of course, is important, but being able to quantify everything um, kind of was a, was a big deal. Now, at some point and, and through this, people, the industries, I think one of the key things is we have uh, at least two very strong, you know, they've given competing for a hundred years very ferociously and they're competing in this sustainability arena as well as everything else so that led to some very intense dialogue and really having to think down to the very tiny details how to be fair and transparent and the same thing existed in supply chains and then having to think about practicality from the the government side the agency sides about how do you make this practical so I think those are a couple of main concerns. You, what, what else was your impression? Yeah, no, I wanted to highlight the uh, collaborative effort from everybody within the Sustainable Payment Technical Working Group. John highlighted that there is competition, there are different viewpoints, agencies have different um, speed of um, defining sustainability and to talk to their contractors and industry what they want them to do and how life cycle thinking is integrated in the decision-making process and the planning process even, as Milena put in. So there's all different attitudes towards sustainability in the same room. And I think the greatest benefit of uh, the program is that we've managed to keep the conversation going. So everybody, I think it's fair to say, had a place to voice uh, their uh, position and concerns and uh, optimism of where they wanted to go. And we've tried to find a way to accommodate conversation between different actors uh, using the excuse of developing the framework, developing the tool <laughs> to sort of educate and streamline everybody to so that we'd be moving in the same direction. And I think that harmonization, although it's not a formal standard, is and, and the collaborative effort that everybody's still in the room, and but, but the conversation has changed to much more specific conversation We actually solve some problems. I yeah. think those are the two main benefits from this program. Uh, yeah, I think our main product is not the framework, not the tool, uh, not the other things. I think our main product is a community that 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 generally trusts their eyes wide open, but they trust each other and they engage in a civil dialogue about technical issues. And we all now have a common language. We, we understand the common um, issues. And I think our community of government, industry, multiple industries, and even other players uh, in the area. We're starting to bring in NGOs who've been kind of outside and had their own agenda as well. Um, so I think our, our community is our best product. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is exactly what I felt when I came, but with your words, I think he came out in, a, in an appropriate way. Well, I can continue going on and on, but maybe pressure, is there any, any question from the audience? Oh, I don't think uh, we have we do have uh, some questions, but uh, I think we are already out of time. It's already our five, so I I think that we need to wrap up the um, the webinar. 
I would like to thank Joe and Joan for, for this very interesting uh, presentation. And, uh, and yes, I think we have a lot of things to, to learn in Europe or things that at least we could follow from the example of uh, the US as we have seen in the last presentations. I would like to say that we have, yesterday we had two celebrities to open the webinar. Today we have two celebrities, two different celebrities to close it. Oh, there you go. Well, I'm not well, talking about the opening job. Well, both of you. We, we, have, we uh, just started. So thanks, John. Thanks, John. I think we're the second call. Yeah. Yes. Thank Very you. Well. And uh, if you, Bracia and uh, Davide, if you want to share my email, uh, that would be fine. And I hope these presentations uh, are made uh, public as well. Yeah, yeah. We'll share them. We'll share them. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And just for the very Bye. last words of the webinar, we will have.